हरे कृष्ण महाराज हरे कृष्ण महाराज प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हम्बल ओबेसेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरीज टू शीला प्रभुपा थैंक यू सो मच महाराज फॉर जॉइनिंग है दिस मॉर्निंग एंड एनलाइटनेस एनलाइटनिंग अस ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम फिफ्थ कैंटो ट्वेंटी सिक्स चैप्टर वर्स नंबर फोर्टी एंड टुडे वी आर एंडिंग द फिफ्थ कैंटो महाराज वी आर वेरी फीलिंग सो फॉर्चुनेट दैट यू यू आर कमिंग फॉर दिस लास्ट वर्स ऑन द फिफ्थ कैंटो थैंक यू सो मच महाराज फॉर योर वैल्यूबल टाइम एंड एसोसिएशन प्लीज टेक ओवर महाराज हरे कृष्णा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद् भागवतम 526 टेक्स्ट नंबर 40 डिस्क्रिप्शंस ऑफ द हेलिश प्लैनेट्स स्थूल वकुंसाकल जीव निखाय धाम ट्रांसलेशन नाउ Maharaj Parikshit is hearing from Sukadeva Goswami, and he says, "My dear King, I have now described for you this planet Earth, other planetary systems, and their lands, varses, rivers, and mountains. I have also described the sky, the ocean, the lower planetary systems, the directions, the helitary." The hellish planetary systems and the stars. These constitute the Virat Rupa, the gigantic material form of the Lord, which on which all living entities repose. As I have explained, the wonderful expanse of the eternal, external body of the Lord. <coughs> Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta Swami purpose of the fifth. Canto 26, Chapter Shrimad Bhagavatam, Description of the Hellas Plants, completed in Hanulu Temple of Panchatantra, the Hanulu Temple of the Panchatantra, June 5th, 1995. So here is a supplementary note by Srila Prabhupada, written, no, written by His Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. and this is quite lengthy but we will take it bit by bit its translation as follows learned scholars who have full knowledge of all the vedic scriptures agree that the incarnations of the supreme now the godhead are innumerable these incarnations are classified in two divisions prabhava and vaibhava According to the scriptures, Prabhava incarnations are also classified into two divisions: those of which eternal and those of which are not vividly described. This fifth canto, in chapters three to six, there is a description of Rishabde, but there is not an expanded description of his spiritual activities. Therefore, he is considered to belong to the second group. Of Prabhava incarnations, verse Canto chapter three verse thirteen says, "Asmate meru dev yam tu na vir janta uru krama darshayan varta diranam sarvashram namaskritam." Lord Vishnu appeared in the eighth incarnation. As the son of Maharaj Nabi, 
can't read it because it's covered. Go down the page. The son of Ag Agnidra and his wife Meridae. We show the path of perfection, the Paramahansa stage of life, which is worshipped by all the followers of the Vanashram Dharma. Prashabdev is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His body is spiritual. Sat Chit Ananda Vigraha. Therefore, one may ask how it may be possible that he passed stool and urine. The Gaudi of Vedanta Acharya Baladev Vidya Bhoshana has replied to this question in the book known as Siddhanta Ratna. Imperfect men call attention to Rash Rushabdev's passing stool and urine as the subject matter for the study of non devotees who do not understand the spiritual position of a transcendental body. In the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavad, the illusion and bewildered state of the materialist in this age is fully described. In 559, Rabshabde stated, Idam Sadiram Mamadori Rav Yam. This body of mine is inconceivable to the materialists. It's confirmed by Krishna Abhajanti Mamuha Marushim Tanamasrutam. Parambhava Madhyama Tum Mamabhuta Maheshwara. Krishna speaks, fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature, my supreme dominion over all that be. The human form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is extremely difficult to understand. In fact, for a common man, it is inconceivable. Therefore, Rishabh Dev has directly explained that his own, own body belongs to the spiritual platform. This being so, Sri Shabdev didn't actually pass stool and urine. Even though he superficially seemed to pass stool and urine, he was also transcendental and cannot be imitated by the common man. It is also stated in Bhagavatam that stool, the stool and urine of Rishabdev was full of transcendental fragrance. One may imitate Rishabdev but he cannot imitate by passing stool that is fragrant. The activities of Rishabdev do not support the claims of certain class of men known as Arhat, who sometimes advertise that they are followers of Rishabdev. How can they be followers of Rishabdev while they are against the Vedic principles? Sukadev Goswami has related that after hearing about the characteristics of Lord Rishabde, the king of Konka, Venka, and Kutaka initiated a system of religious principles known as Arhat. These principles were not in accord with the Vedic principles, and therefore they are called Vishanda Dharma. The members of the Arhat community consider Rishabde's activities material. However, Rishab is an incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is on the transcendental platform and no one can compare to him. Rishab Dave personally exhibited the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As is stated in the Bhagavatam, Dwan Vanalas Tavan Alilahan Sahadeha Teha Dadaha. The entire forest of the Lord's body was burned to ash in the great forest fire in the same way Rishab days burned people's ignorance to ashes. He exhibited the characteristics of the Paramahansma in his instructions to his sons. The principles of the Arhat community, however, do not correspond to the teachings of Rishab Dev. Sri Baladev Vidyushana remarked in the eighth canti of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is another description of Rishabdev, but that Rishabdev is different from the one described in this canto. Shri Bhagavatam 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 Shri Bhagavatam
श्रीमक्ति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमस्ते सरस्वती देव भय गौरवाणी प्रचारी सुन्यवारी पश्चात्य देव सिद्धारणी वंश कौपा कृप सिंधु पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्त बिंदु हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो देयर इज ऑलवेज अ क्लास ऑफ पर्सन्स हु रीड स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड समटाइम्स इवन स्टडी स्क्रिप्चर बट आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड स्क्रिप्चर बिकॉज everything that they derive from scripture is based on their own limited understanding and therefore when they see something that appears to be material that is attached to the supreme personality of god head they conclude that such personality is has a material body and as krishna says as is quoted here abhijanti mambu ha fools deride me when i descend in my human form they do not know my supreme dominion over all that be my transcendental nature and supreme dominion over all that be you also say naham prakash sarvasya yoga maya samudita ha muro yo avajananti ava avyayam the and also in that same chapter krishna again illustrates I am covered by my curtain of Maya, and therefore the the uh, greater world cannot know me, who is transcendental and infallible. So uh, when we apply material terminologies, when we see something just like Lord Nityananda, he was hit in the head with a pot, and his head started to bleed. so you might consider how is it the body of the supreme lord can start bleeding like an ordinary body but these and these uh, features of the transcendental body of the lord are simply there to bewilder the non-devotees they want to see the lord as material and so the lord exhibits his activities material they also see that krishna you know he he steals butter he's tied up by his mother and he cries but he they don't see that he lifts his he lifts over down hill so people want to recategorize or wrongly categorize the supreme lord by the symptoms of something material krishna was shot in the foot with an arrow by a hunter and he appeared to die because of that uh krishna did that just to be willed the nandavodis to keep their foolish ideas that he was an ordinary person the reason he does that is the only way you can know him is by devotional service of it he says only by undivided devotional service can i know can i be known as i am standing before you and thus be seen directly only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding so uh, to be well to the atheists to keep their material concepts intact he uh, apparently acts no one dies by getting shot in the foot with an arrow but krishna did that and appears that he uh,
I think Maharaj is frozen. We can't hear him. We're experiencing very bad internet today across you. Yes, even Maharaj is quite disconnected. Yes, yes. Mataji, does Maharaj know that he's disconnected? Shri Mati Mataji, is she there? We can chant until Maharaj comes. Yes. Hey Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, 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 Hare
Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Maharaj. I'm sorry, we, we got a. I think it should be okay from now on. Let's see. Where did I leave off? <laughs> To explaining how the um, the non devotees 
are very superficially oriented to make their definitions of the activities of the Lord as being material when they see the hymn exhibiting some of the characteristics of the ordinary people. But then we made the point, and it's important to understand that the Lord, he says, which really indicates that the, the Lord, he keeps in, he fulfills the desires of everyone. If you want to remember him, he will help you. If you want to forget him, he will also help you and give you reasons to forget him. And if you want knowledge of him, he will also provide that. So the non-devotees, they want to find fault because they have no faith. The reason they have their faith is they go, they don't know the process for understanding the Lord and so forth. They don't, because they don't take up the process, which is bhakti, <clears throat> due to their limited knowledge of ajanti mamurha, Krishna calls them fools <coughs> because they see things in a limited or you might say a material way. So here is a nice, elaborate, very concise, elaborate, but a very complete description of Rishabdev. So was that like the ordinary person passing stool and urine? But all the acharyas, not only Bhakti Siddhanta and Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta and all the previous acharyas who speak on this particular pastime say, then ha, but his stool was fragrant and it was giving fragrance into the high, the entire countryside. So no one can do that. It's not possible, but because that a spiritual body can do and not a material body. <clears throat> so his body was purely spiritual, but he's acting in a certain way to bewilder the atheists and non-devotees. So this group that sprung up from him is called Arhat. They're actually atheists. In the commentary, in one of the verses, that uh, this idea of following Arhat is a concocted thing. It's not a bona fide religion. It's uh, it's follow those who have no understanding. What a devotee knows through the process of devotional service, that the Lord can do anything, either ma apparently material, and at the same time, uh, be transcendental to the activities. Krishna never touches the material world, although he appears to. It's like you can't mix oil and water together if you try to mix them because of their different constitutions they automatically will separate. Similarly, when the Lord comes to the material world, Prabhupada gives the example, a governor may go into a prison house and he may be walking around amongst the inmates, but he is not one of the inmates, although he's inside the prison house. He can go, come and go freely. So some of the inmates might mistakenly think, well, the governor is also one of us. Using that example, it's the Supreme Lord comes to the material world, but he doesn't touch the material world. His body is not material. It's always in the transcendental position. 
although from the limited point of view, it, ex it exhibits some of the characteristics of a material body. But that is just for the non-devotees to uh, allow them to keep their atheistic activities. Because Krishna is not trying to convince anybody that he's God. The process of convincing him people that he's God is bhakti. So one has to take up the process and not by gyan, not by yoga, not by karma, not by a combination of all of these can one uh, understand the nature of the Supreme Lord. So bhakti is the path of enlightenment, the path of pure transcendental knowledge, which reveals the nature of the Supreme Lord according to the level of one's development in bhakti. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Krishna says, you can understand me, at least to a certain degree, no one can fully understand the Supreme Lord. If you could fully understand the Supreme Lord, you would be as good as the Supreme Lord. But one can get a enough understanding of the Lord to understand that the Lord is completely transcendental to everything material. And at the same time, he's controlling that material that, uh, and directing the wanderings of all living beings. That is Krishna. And he comes in any of his incarnations, they also exhibit these same characteristics, but in different ways according to time, place, and candidate. So uh, we see from this description or this, uh, this uh, uh, commentary by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati that there's always a class of people who want to pull down or relegate the Supreme Lord to an ordinary person. And one of the reasons why they do that, it may not be so over, but it is there is that they don't have to worship the Lord then. They don't have to surrender to the Lord. Because when the Lord comes, he teaches eternal religious principles. And in order to benefit from that, one has to follow these principles and also follow the direction of the scriptures, which guides one towards a realization of the, of the Lord and his different incarnations. No one can make up or create a process of religion, nor a process of understanding the Supreme Lord. Everything is there in the scriptures and everything is given to us by the pure devotee, spiritual master who is in touch with the Lord through the process of devotional service. So um, as Sukadev Goswami concludes his particular chapter, he says that I have told you everything about the material energy in its different components, compartments. And for clarification, now we hear, for those who may have a doubt about Rishabdev, I mean, some of the other activities he performed, he put stones in his mouth and acted like a deaf and dumb man. He was being draggled. His hair was in all directions. And uh, he appeared to be a madman, but he wasn't. He is the Supreme Lord, and he's acting in a certain way in order to teach certain religious principles according to time, place, and candidate. Okay, so we'll uh, stop there. and open it up for questions. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your wonderful association. I apologize since...
all the devotees for a very poor internet connection today. Maharaj, not only you, my internet was stalling too. And thank you for explaining so nicely that in order to understand God, you need to, one needs to be godly. That's a very nice and uh, wonderful to mention, Maharaj, that how all the religious things are produced by the Lord, depending on the... You actually answered one of my questions, which I had in my mind. So thank you for that, that why we have so many different religions created by God. So um, if, probably just depending on the time, place, and situation, man, and by the type of people. So God comes up with so many religions. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, we have mm -hmm. already... Um, you were saying something, Maharaj? I was agreeing. <laughs> Wonderful. We will open the session to question answers. If you could kindly uh, unmute your videos. And um, um, Shukahara Prabhuji, would you like to go ahead with your question? Yes, madam. Yes, Mataji Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, class was so fantastic. So my question is, you are told that to understand the, the Supreme Lord, we must become godly. So uh, godly means, that means a person who is beyond the three modes, who is uh, liberated, he is only godly. We are all, actually, at least me, I am still a dog. I am a servant of God. I am just serving, trying the best. So godly means you have to come to the transcendental level, Guru Maharaj. Well, to come to the transcendental level means to engage in devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. By doing that, one gradually raises their consciousness through the different modes, comes to the mode of goodness, and eventually uh, transcends the mode of goodness as one is situated on the spiritual platform. So it's a process. So being godly, I don't know if that word actually applies to this particular situation. It, it means being engaged in devotional service. Uh, Maharaj, our godly quality. Yesterday I was reading Maharaj, the you third know, canto. Maharaj, uh, yesterday I was reading yeah. the third canto in that uh, Srila Prabhupada has written in the purport where Kardama Muni, he did 10,000 years of uh, penance and uh, he could see Krishna face to face. The Supreme Lord came. Then uh, he uh, married Devahuti. At the time, uh, he created a uh, uh, castle in the in the air. And at the time, Srila Prabhupada wrote that since he is a godly person, that's why he could do all these things. So, I thought godly means you should, uh, you know, you should see God or you should be a very, very liberated person. Then only you can understand God. But I can understand from your uh, explanation that in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Manishyanam Sahasreshu, seventh chapter, Kaschit Daiti Siddhiye, Yetata Amata Siddhanam Kaschin Maam Veti Tattva. That out of so many perfected, one tried to become perfect, and out of so many perfected ones, hardly one was been true. So what you say is correct. To know God means you should be as good as God. In the sense, you should be a pure, totally... Uh, out of the three modes of material nature, then only you are godly. Am I right, my Maharaj? That's right, but if we accept the words of the bona fide spiritual master, the pure devotees coming into the ah, okay, 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 we Maharaj. can accept we can okay. accept what they say as being absolutely true, even though we, ah. may, we might not have the, the realization of it. Okay, Maharaj. At least we'll, so the we'll have the faith to accept whatever scripture says, it is sure because we believe in the parampara, we believe in Krishna, we believe. So we are accepting Krishna and we are serving the way they have told. Right. Exactly. Maharaj, how to get the pure devotional service, how to get that level? We are all doing Mangalarti chanting for 25 years, 30 years, 35 years. So pure devotional service is at a very, very high level no? where you are totally transcendental. You are not getting any Maya attack. You are uh, you are uh, seeing Krishna and every everywhere. You can see Krishna. Nothing else. Some above that uh, is that is the way that uh, 
that one has to get the pure devotional service? Yeah, we should aspire for that, but even higher than that is just aspire to surrender in devotional service. By your surrender and your enthusiasm, enthusiastic to engage in the practical devotional service under the goddess of your spiritual master, gradually all of these things will be revealed. As like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati used to say, don't be so eager to see Krishna, but be eager to act in such a way that Krishna wants to see you. Jai, 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 Maharaj. Maharaj, so wonderful. Last question, Maharaj. Now, you are also liberated persons. You are only Prabhupada's <coughs> disciple and you have been serving so much. Please, can you give a small clue that how to chant better and the best? Just give something on the chanting, Maharaj. How? Because every day we are chanting, we tend to listen to the chanting, but give something so that we can improve than what we have done yesterday. Maharaj, please give your realization, yeah, Maharaj, I'll, please. I'll give you something that has helped me that way. Maybe yeah. that'll be as practically. And that is I, I chant 16 rounds before I do anything. Jai, okay. In other words, don't, don't even begin your day until you finish 16 rounds. Okay. If you do that continuously for a while, you'll see a qualitative change in everything that you do. It'll be, you'll be able to, to have all of the intelligence and the clarity you need to go through the day and without getting affected by the material energy. And at the same time, you'll also be able to improve the quality of your chanting. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. And how to get the absorbed chanting? How to get absorbed? We are doing group chanting around 80 people in the morning from 4 o'clock to 6.30. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But you as a great devotee of Krishna who is pure, pure devotee, please give something more, Maharaj. Sorry we are disturbing you so much. Please. We want to just get some blessing, Maharaj. Nothing else. When uh, when you become completely dependent, <coughs> Lord, to because the chanting means, my dear Lord, I'm I've fallen into this ocean of material suffering, and I I can't get out only by your mercy. So by the, by the by the mercy of your holy name, please fix me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. So the chanting means to fix our consciousness at Krishna's lotus feet. So we. So we also can offer prayers either before or during the time we are chanting in order to offer something to the Lord explaining that, yes, I'm chanting, but I'm also praying for uh, you to pick me up. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Uh, we seek your blessings. Seek your you. blessings. My name is Sukhakar Kashadas. I'm a Disciple of His Honor Jaipataksa Maharaj, and uh, I am in Chennai in India. Oh, I am 63 okay. year old, initiated in 1993. I was ISKCON uh, leader, I mean, sorry, not leader, ISKCON Yatra servant for uh, Sharjah and Dubai, uh, Sharjah and Ajman. So around 2000 mm -hmm. initiation took place in the last 20 years. Now I am in Chennai, 63 year old, but I want to go back home in this, own, in this life. I seek your blessings completely, Maharaj, please. Well, no, well you, you're, you, have, you have a very good shelter with Jai Pataka Maharaj, so you, you're probably guaranteed to go back. <laughs> no, you are also you my uncle. Stay. Your Jai Pataka Maharaj's brother means you are my uncle, Chacha. So I need your Chacha's blessing also, Maharaj, please. <laughs> well, my blessings is uh, the holy da so name. Tawasmi. Da Soham Tawasmi, Da Soham Tawasmi. Uh, the blessing is Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Eva Kevalam, Kalon, Nasteva, 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 Dati, Anita. No other way. From you also, Chandramarasi Maharaj, from you also, I need, yes, you just keep me in your mind for at least as a prayer and begging at your feet, <coughs> at your lotus feet. And of course, chanting means uh, Vaishnav Seva. Uh, take, take every opportunity to serve the Vaishnavas. And okay. that will 
And that will give you recognition by the Supreme Lord. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much for your blessings and mercy. Kripa, Kripa Siddhya. Today I got the Kripa for Chandra Mulishri Maharaj. He told me Chandra Mulishri Maharaj, Ki Jai Ho! Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ho! Thank you for your enthusiasm. Dasa and Das, Sukha Kara Krishna Das. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. We'll proceed. Um, Prahala Dhananda Prabhuji, please go ahead. Then what, Maharaj Prabhu? Uh, my name is Prahala Dhananda and I'm in Las Vegas. And uh, I don't have any question. I'm just giving little realization I got through your association today. Uh, reading Srimad Bhagavatam to start with when I was very young, I didn't believe so many things. Then I came across Prabhupada's uh, statement that human intelligence has a ceiling. All right? Just like a dog has a ceiling in, in, in intelligence, cannot understand that there is a government in uh, Washington, D.C. So that's where I realized that, oh, my intelligence is so in, insignificant. I cannot understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Then I understood as I studied Bhagavad Gita, I said, Bhaktya Mama Vidyanati Yavan Yasya So if I want to know Lord Krishna, I will do bhakti. Then I started following you know, Prabhupada Maharaj's teachings, got into initiated and all that. Then I started understanding a little, little more then. The Bhagavan says, what kind of bhakti? Mamcha avyabhicharana bhakti yogena sevte sagunan samati tetan brahma bhuyaita. That stage is very difficult for me to reach there. But just by little, little association like today I have with you, uh, my intelligence, my understanding goes so high. <laughs> I can start feeling that transcendental pleasure, which is actually a sign of Satchidananda. You know, the pleasure which I feel out of association, reading Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, chanting is all spiritual bliss which I am feeling. But that does not continue because of having my your know, karma and you know the, the material environment like that. But this is this is what is my realization that as long as I am in touch with Sri Prabhupada's words and in live association like your good self and the, your mm -hmm. other devotees, always feel the spiritual bliss. Very little, little karika like that. So this is this is what is my realization today, Maharaj. And I'm so grateful that I'm in this group where we get exalted Vaishnavas like you from all over the world. And that, that's a great treasure, I believe. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak, Maharaj. And that went Prana. Hare go. Thank you. Your words are like gems describing the whole process of bhakti in a very succinct way. Yes, when we realize we're insignificant, yet there's an ocean of mercy that is coming towards us. We just have to go for it in the form of Prabhupada's teachings and Prabhupada's instructions, both. Everything is there. Prabhupada alone can take us back home, back to God, simply by, if we have complete faith, and do our best to serve Srila Prabhupada by serving his devotees. Thank you, Maharaj. Haribo. Haribo. I have a devotee who has his um, name as the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself and pose your question to Maharaj? I cannot call your name because I don't see your name. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I'm Ayam Shah from West Bengal. I offer my humblest obeisance to Sanjay Lotus Spirit. Uh, I don't have a question from this text, but uh, I have the question that in the first canon, first canto, first chapter, first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport that uh, one should read Srimad Bhagavatam and go through Srimad Bhagavatam step by step, uh, verses after verses. So um, I have just, I'm in class nine and I have started reading Bhagavad, Srimad Bhagavatam and I'm in first chapter, first canto, uh, first verse. 
and now I have joined this section session. So can I just continue this session? That this yeah, uh, which is yeah. Bhag Bhagavatam is like a a sweet ball. Any any time any side you bite it, it's it's sweet. It's a culpa vriksha tree. It can fulfill all spiritual desires. So um, there's no restriction. You can hear any of the verses at any time. But continue with your progressive study of Bhagavatam. That will also give you a, an understanding of how Bhagavatam unfolds from one stage to another. Um, but you can also come and continue on this program because uh, even though it's five cantos later, still there's much to be learned. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Please bless me, Maharaj, that I can just read Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare. We have a beautiful sharing from Megha Mataji, and she's writing um, such beautiful realization and questions. Really blissful to have association of such exalted devotees and exalted speakers. Thank you, Bhakti Sangha, for creating this wonderful forum, which we can. Uh, where we can ha have such exchanges between devotees. Ever grateful to everyone. Hari mm -hmm. This knowledge is descending from the spiritual world into the hearts of the pure devotees. So it has nothing to do with this world itself. And it's meant to elevate the consciousness of the conditioned souls to the stage of devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is full of variety and it is full of ras. Ras means that's the sweetness that connects us with Krishna in different ways. We should read, study, understand, and learn how to apply this knowledge in our day-to-day -day life. And that is uh, that will take our consciousness to Krishna. So it's a process. Reading and hearing is both the same. We're hearing. That is also comparable to questions. reading. It's just a different form of hearing. And then try to understand. And through the understanding, we can uh, get some realization once we get some understanding. And then and real, when we can apply it to our day-to-day -day life. And then this knowledge is no longer just something that is there it becomes part of you there's no longer just a philosophical treatise on transcendental knowledge it actually becomes your characteristics you develop the characteristics the qualities of the knowledge that you are learning through the application of this knowledge so application requires guidance but at least we can hear and try to understand and understand comes by asking questions that are uh, helps us to clarify what we are hearing. And also it can also give us some understanding of how to apply that in our day-to-day -day life. Wonderful explanation, Maharaj, as always. Thank you so much. Devotees, any further question for Maharaj? You may go ahead now. Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Aditi Devi Dasi from Canada. Um, yeah, in uh, regards to the um, uh, you know questions uh, about the godly you mentioned, um, I'm just wondering, is um, uh, if uh, Kanishta Adhikari is associated all the time with Uttam Adhikari, uh, do you think then we can reach that stage of godliness? 
Well, there's an old saying, tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. Sangha. Yeah. So association is powerful. It works both ways, both on the positive and the negative. So if we accept transcendental association, we will also develop some of the characteristics in due course of time. But the advantage of that association is to hear, hear from such persons, and at the same time, look for opportunities to offer service. And that way we are associating. It's more than just being in the physical, the same physical area. It means actually hearing and uh, looking for opportunities for sale. Yeah, and then, and, and then a Kanistarikari, or you might say a neophyte devotee, will start shedding some of its neophyte qualities and develop the characteristics of a second class devotee, which are which will situate one nicely in devotional service. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. please so, accept so, my humble. Hare Krishna. Association Hare. is everything. Yes, indeed, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Will you be coming to the Toronto Rathiatra? Maharaj, I'm in Canada. Um, no, uh, I'm waiting to go to Vancouver because our Guru Maharaj, Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, is uh, supposed to be coming to um, North America and USA. So hopefully I will visit my Guru Maharaj oh, okay. in I Vancouver. Just, I was just mentioning the Toronto Rathiatra, which is coming up in mid-July. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. If you come, I'll see you there. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I hope to, you know, that will be my you know, luckiest day, <laughs> the day I meet you, Maharaj. We are all trying, but because of the COVID restrictions, COVID is again, you know, there's a, another wave of COVID. So yeah, we are a little bit, uh, you know, reluctant. So, but uh, we hope to be there, you know, hopefully. Thank you, Maharaj, for your association. Wonderful classes, usual. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, every time you're here with your association, with your presence, everybody becomes sublime. And they're just happy with your presence. Devotees, go ahead and ask questions if you have any. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances on Guru Shushila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful uh, class, Maharaj. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, I mean, we start our spiritual lives by knowing that we are not this body, we are spirit soul. And uh, Srila Prabhupada has, uh, throughout his lectures, again and again, said this point. Oh. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. 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 Begin again. Uh, yeah, so uh, we begin our spiritual lives by knowing that we are not this body, we are spirit souls. And Srila Prabhupada in his lectures over and over again repeated, repeats the same point. And, uh, and so my question is, even after so many years, our, uh, it is hard to realize this, that Knowing is one thing, but realizing when 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 the situations come, uh, so I mean, when do when what do we do to to realize that, and uh, when when that would happen, Maharaj? Well, we should stop trying to fulfill material desires and just fulfill our spirit our spiritual desires. When we feel material desires, we're reinforcing the bodily conception of life. When we act on the spiritual platform, we are, we're, we're decreasing the bodily conception of life. So, yeah, we have to 
stay fixed in the consciousness of Krishna. Krishna consciousness means consciousness of Krishna. It's not only about doing activities, it's about, it's about remembering Krishna, thinking of Krishna, offering prayers to Krishna, worshiping Krishna, hearing about Krishna. All of these raises our consciousness. And although we have a material body, we will not be so much inclined to simply cater to the needs of the material body. You see, the Goswami says they were making advancement, they decrease. And this is a general, you decrease your eating, you decrease your sleeping, you decrease your the activities that are contrary to devotional service. You find more time for Krishna. You uh, become very, what we say, uh, you're not so much interested in your material obligations, although you do it as a duty and not simply as a as a source of happiness. If you stay on the spiritual platform, that means staying engaged in devotional service, you'll gradually you know, decrease the idea that I am this body. You become more aware, yeah, I'm, I'm spirit soul. What happened to this, this body doesn't happen to me. You, the body can be used in devotional service, but you're, you're the one that's actually connecting with Krishna, not the body. The body is simply the instrument to act in this material world. That's all it is. As long as the soul is in the material world, it has to have some body to exist in. But if we keep, keep engaged in devotional service, although we still have a material body, where we are more connected with, we're connected with Krishna directly through the, through the activities of devotional service. We can remember Krishna. When we see the material energy, we, we don't get attracted to it. And maybe we don't even get averse to it. We simply see it for what it is. It's just there, that's all. It's like a painting on the wall. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even notice it. You just pass it by. So the material energy is like that. It's just, it's here, but you don't give it any attention. The only thing you give attention to is what, you're, what you should be doing in devotional service. That's all. And as I mentioned, give a, give attention to Krishna. When you actually understand devotional service, it means remembering Krishna 24 hours a day. <laughs> so practice that. <laughs> If you're remembering Krishna and you walk into a door and you bang your head, you won't feel it. But if you're not remembering Krishna and you walk into a door and you bang your head, you'll feel it. <laughs> it's that, it's yes. that like that. Have you ever had that experience when you remember Krishna? Even though something is going on in a material level? You don't feel it, you don't, it doesn't affect you. Um, my little experience is uh, if some, some problem is bothering me before chanting and after finishing the 16 rounds, uh, it doesn't bother that much uh, because uh, <laughs> there is some, yeah. Chanting solves the problem. <laughs> you can solve the problem by trying to solve the problem, or you can solve the problem by going above the problem. Chanting means to go above, above the problem. On the spiritual platform, there's no problem. But I don't have experience of, uh, you know, banging against the thing and uh, 
<laughs> not feeling remembering krishna so definitely i have to improve on remembering the lord i'm just giving you ideas you may not be on a complete transcendental platform but you can work towards that then you get indications as time goes on thank you so much maharaj something to really contemplate more and more on thank you so much we are waiting to see you here toronto rath yatra maharaj i pray that i can make it nowadays travel has become one of the most difficult things but if krishna wants me to get there i'll get there so but if the devotees want me to get there that's even better because krishna listens to his devotees in this context um raj prabhu is sharing something with all of us he he's saying that yes right now his holiness bhakti mark swami maharaj is in vancouver and then his holiness gopal krishna goswami maharaj is coming in july and then in june 25th his grace gauranga prabhu is coming to so much a so amazing association yes yes in north america and he offers his obe- glories he glorifies prabhu pad of course yeah take advantage of the association i'll tell you a secret Yes, Maharaj. We love secrets. The business of the spiritual leaders is to engage you so much in devotional service, you forget about all your material activities, and then you made it. We can't tell you to stop it because you won't do it. So we just keep giving you more and more things to do so you don't have any time for the other things. <laughs> But it works, Maharaj. At the end, we always have to constantly keep tricking our mind. That's where it comes. Right. The mind always wants you know, to how to take trick the it. Yes. You always wants to take the easy way out. Absolutely. And then the same thing wouldn't work the next time because it knows already. It's, it's amazing. It's just mind thing. So difficult. There's a story. Prabhupada was in India, I think it was Delhi, he was giving a lecture. There were many important people there from the government. And when the Prabhupada's lecture was completed, one of the men came forward and uh, fell at the feet of Prabhupada, flat, complete dandavats. And he was very humble. and the devotees who were with Prabhupada, the us who were americans we were quite shocked to see how proud was able to inspire such humility and devotion in such an important person so um later on they asked proud proud what is it about you that causes them the people like that to have so much devotion and prabhupad said he said i have no lust he said i have no lust and then immediately he turned around got in his car along with a few devotees and they were going back to the hotel where prabhupad was staying and then the the car ride was quite quiet and then uh, prabhupad could sense that they were thinking about what he said 
And then when Prabhupada got to the place, he got out of the car, looked at the devotees, said, it's not because I have no lust, it's because I have no time. Don't give Maya any time. That's it. Wonderful, wonderful, yes. Uh, someone is trying to break down my door, so I better go in, <laughs> go and let them in. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. Hare Krishna. Welcome back, Maharaj. I'm just quickly scanning through. Any other realizations from anybody that you would like to share? Any quick questions, remarks, concerns that you might have? This is the time. Feel free to go ahead. So Maharaj, one question, as we constantly keep thinking that all we need to offer to Krishna is the mind, basically that's it. If the mind is engaged, then everything else is engaged. And that's the basic thing. And we keep getting, we keep failing how to trick the mind, how to trick the mind. Now, when we shed this gross body, the mind isn't the subtle body, right? The mind comes out. When do we lose the mind? On our when you become, journey. Yeah, what? When you become liberated. Okay, you mean when you when, become li liberated when you reach the liberated platform, and then the subtle body is dissolved automatically, and the soul returns to the spiritual world. As long as you're not you're still under the influence of material desires, you have to continue to take birth, life after life, and the mind. The intelligence and the ego, the subtle body, carries the soul from one body to another. Only when you reach the platform of liberation, then no longer do you receive a material body and the, the subtle body is dissolved. And then you go back home or you go back to the spiritual world. So in the spiritual world, there is no spiritual mind. There is just consciousness. No, there is a spiritual mind. And, and a spiritual body, of course, right? Yeah, there's a spiritual, there spiritual body, mind. a spiritual mind, spiritual intelligence. Everything you have on this level is there. But this level is like a dummy. You, you go into a, you, you pass a shop and you see a clothing store. And you see the, the different mannequins are dressed in... Uh, you know, the different clothes that display what they're selling. So you see a body there looks like a very beautiful girl or a very attractive man, but it's fake. <laughs> it looks like the real thing, it's, but it's fake. From a distance, people might even mistake it for the real thing. So in the same way, this material body is we have is fake. <laughs> it's, it's this made out of material elements which are always changing and ultimately will be dissolved in due course of time. But inside of this material body, there is the spiritual body, which also has form. It has spiritual mind, spiritual intelligence, everything is there. And this, so this body is a covering with a real body, like a glove, is covering the hand. The glove may have the same shape as the hand, but the, the glove can't act like a hand. That's so true, Maharaj, when you are saying that. I'm seeing myself on the screen here, and now I realize that I, this is a fake person there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is really realization with 
it's good, you know. As we get, <laughs> yeah, if you try to tell that to young people, they they may agree with you, but they can't understand. When you get old and you've been in Krishna consciousness, then you understand, yeah, this body is what it is. <laughs> it's it's a, just miserable. It says for the non-devotee, his mind is a burden. For a devotee, his body is a burden. Also in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, it is mentioned that a clever hunter, when he captures the animals, he doesn't become careless to release them again. Similarly, we should capture our mind. <laughs> Be careful not it goes back to Maya's realm. Just keep in touch with Lord Krishna's uh, yeah. you know, internal energy by chanting and yeah. reading. Try, try to remember Krishna. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I have one chat question here. One Mataji has personal message to me in chat. Maharaji, in practical life, sometimes material duties that cannot be avoided, like family responsibilities, takes a lot of our time. And how do we draw a line? <laughs> Everybody has their ideas where to draw the line. <laughs> well, when Krishna says, that's it, it's all over. The line's drawn. So prepare yourself now by using as much time as you can for Krishna consciousness. Someone asked me to give a, they asked me to give a class how to balance material and spiritual. I told them you can't balance it. It's not possible. Whatever you feed, will expand. If you feed your material, it'll expand. If you feed your spiritual, it will expand. Where do you want, where do you want to put your focus on? So we say do the minimum when it comes to the material. But that's hard. Why is it hard? Because the more you try to perfect your material life, the more it expands and more responsibilities come up, more duties come up. Mm -hmm. But keep it simple. That's all. Just try to tell it, try to expand your spiritual life, and Krishna will take care of your material life. Don't worry about it. Uh, may I say something, uh, Maharaj? Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Rusabdev oh. Maharaj, uh, Rusabdev Maharaj is telling his sons. In this slok, he says that those who have done developed love for me, Yeva Maise Kruta Sahrudartha. Those who have developed Sahrud for me, how do they behave with the people who are Janesu Dehambar Varti Kesu, who are interested in materialistic? And how does he behave with wife and children at home? Then he says, na priti yukta. They behave, they are, but they are not attached. And they are doing this as much as required, as much salt in the food as much required, not more, not less. This is the slope which I follow in my, my daily life. Yeah. <laughs> which, which says that I am involved yeah. materially. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, as much as required, not much. But my main business is to attach with Lord Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Chandra. Yeah, that's the idea. The main business is Krishna, not the right. main business is try to divide your material into spiritual and give equal portion to both. That's not the <laughs> main when business. I have, is Krishna. Yeah, when I have to, to help my wife in kitchen and do so many things, 
I put lectures on my cell phone and hear and at the same time do the work. So the ear is engaged in hearing Katha, the hands are in, in doing, <laughs> doing some work in the kitchen and like that. So this is how practically it helps me. You know, instead of thinking so many yeah. other things, I'm thinking I'm in, and hearing Krishna Katha. So that's how you can minimize the material involvement along with doing uh, material work or activities like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. But the body is a kinchina gauchara. Yeah, kinchina gauchara. He's finished with material life. <laughs> but still he may do his responsibilities. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives the formula. A woman has a husband, but she also has a lover. She's more interested in her lover than her husband. But in order for her lover, her husband not to suspect, she does her duty to her husband very nicely, but in her heart, she's always thinking about and wanting to be with her lover. Keep Krishna in your heart and your mind. Keep him in your mind. He will actually start to gradually manifest more and more in your heart. Because Krishna is all attractive. Material life is not attractive. <laughs> it's not attractive at all. It's simply a big burden. It's a... Maharaj, to that I would like to add. I think um, maybe we should prioritize and put Krishna consciousness on the first level. So we start at four o'clock in the morning so that, you know, we can do the other duties in Grasta as well, right? So prioritizing yes. your day by putting Krishna consciousness on the top level and we start a day from there and then everything goes smoothly, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we were recommended to our... Our friend in uh, Chennai, the Chennai, chant, chant your rounds, worship, read the Bhagavatam. If you've done all this, then you can think about something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maharaj, at, at 4 o'clock, we start the chanting group. 4 to 6.30, we chant. 6.30 to 7.30, Nama Mrita, there's a class, we do that. Then 7.30 to 9, Srimad Bhagavatam, I take classes. Then from uh, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, there's been... Zoom class in Kerala, Malayalam, I take class. And then from 12 to 1 <clears throat> in Delhi, Noida, Hindi, I take Bhagavad Gita class. Evening 3 to 4 in Bangladesh, I take one class in Bengali. And evening uh, 7 to 8 in Dubai in English and 9 to 10 in Doha in Tamil. So almost 7, 8 classes every day. So like Good. the whole day I'm spending. 7, 8 classes, wow. That's amazing. But still, I feel I'm still not okay. I still want to make it more. I'm greedy. Laulyam. I want your blessing, Maharaj. Well, that's good. Laulyam. Laulyam is the source of success. Yeah. One devotee in Chennai is chanting 207 rounds every day. I went to see what is... 207 rounds. I went and slept with him. I could do only 108 rounds. He's getting up at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock in 6 hours, 64 rounds. Then 1 hour he's uh, doing all puja and all. Then 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock, 64 rounds. Then 1 hour he takes his lunch and all. 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock he chants another 64 rounds. By 9 o'clock he finished 192 rounds like Ariza Stakur. Then 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock he's chanting another uh, 16 rounds. So 207 rounds. He's giving everything for Guru Maharaj's health. So I, I could not uh, be without sleep. I could only 108 rounds. So he's doing this for the last seven years, Maharaj. He's 85 year old. And he's telling no hungriness at all. He's getting all happiness. He is getting nectar, taste of honey in the mouth and no sleep. 11 o'clock, he'll sleep in the night and he'll wait for 1 o'clock to happen to get up and again chat. So, 
I, I could not copy. I just meant I could do only 108 rounds. So maybe there are blessed souls who can do 207 rounds. Sundareshwara Krishna Das. 207 rounds every day? Every day, Maharaj. Every day. I can send you the when he's doing every hour he sends because I only introduce him to Krishna consciousness. So, but he's like my guru it's now. More than, Shila, more than Shila Hari Das <laughs> Yeah, he's really, by God's blessing, he's getting a taste and taste and taste and taste. His daughter, one man, married in Australia and wife was doing only 16 rounds. He's doing 207 rounds. Nothing, other than chanting, nothing he knows. <laughs> yeah. Hari, Hari Anam. Enechi Asari Maya Nasi Bara Lagi. Hari Nama Maha Mantra Lao Tuni Magi. Kalyana. Bhakti Vinota Kaur encourages. Just chant the holy names. This is your life. This is what you're looking for. This is the treasure of your life. The jewel of the twice born Lord Shaitani. He's coming out. Tatari, tatari, bhaji lo ro, gana gana majir avi lo ro, prema daya dala antala. He's singing, bringing his devotees out in the street. He comes out just as the sun rises. Wake up, sleeping souls, wake up. You're sleeping in the lap of Maya. You're simply interested in sleep and decorating your dead bodies. <laughs> Yeah. Just follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you'll be back home, back to Godhead. Jack. He's taking everyone back easily. You don't have to perform great austerities, penances, and Great, great bratas or pujas, homas or whatever else. All you have to do is chat, dance, and associate with Vaishnavas. <laughs> yeah. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gora Chandra Bole, Koto Nidra Jao Maya, Isachira Kole. Jeevijago. <coughs> yes, Maharaj. It's so wonderful songs. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Maharaj. You, sang, Thank you, you very much. sang that so beautifully. I will... All your blessings, Hare Maharaj. Krishna. I'm your servant, eternal servant, Maharaj. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful class. Uh, today we finish uh, fifth gang tomorrow. So Jai. we celebrate with you. <laughs> the sixth canto begins after a, after the first after the first chapter. The sixth canto begins with the story of Ajamio. All about the glories of the holy name, and then the teachings of. Yeah, Yamaraj, who teaches all of us about the glories of the Holy Name, verse after verse. Such a powerful canto, the sixth canto. I love the sixth canto, especially the first three chapters. <laughs> Such a deep. So you'll get, now you'll get the nectar of uh, the understanding of the beauty of chanting the holy name, the power of chanting the holy name, the exclusive position of the holy name. Yay. Well, soon I have to depart because I have a serial duty I have to get with. <laughs> so okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful association. Thank you, my obeisances, everyone. Yeah. Look forward yeah. to seeing you again in two weeks. Yes. <laughs>
श्रीमद भागवतम की जय श्रीपात की जय मोदी स्वामी महाराज की जय हरी 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 हरी